We're in the prairie pothole region right now. This is our number one priority area because of the importance uh, for, for breeding waterfowl. Uh, incredible densities of small shallow wetlands surrounded by grasslands provide the perfect combination to raise uh, over two thirds of all the continent's waterfowl. Right now we're sitting uh, in the heart of Edmonds County, kind of north central South Dakota. Uh, just this perfect prairie pothole habitat. We have uh, you know, hundreds of small shallow seasonal wetlands uh, around us. Uh, the snow has melted here recently in just the past week or two, so all of that runoff has, has pooled into these basins uh, and pervaded the, 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 the perfect habitat uh, for birds as they're migrating through on the uh, first end of the migration here and as they start to settle uh, and form breeding territories. Uh, we have a, a unique mix of, of grasslands uh, in the area that provide the adjacent habitat that, that ducks need to uh, set up their nests uh, adjacent to these small shallow wetlands. So it's pretty neat, uh, you know, in this, in this part of South Dakota, you know, the migration doesn't all happen at once. You know, it's staggered out uh, throughout uh, really, you know, uh, weeks uh, long, depending on, on how, the, how the weather progresses. You know, typically as the, as the snow starts to melt, we'll see those first, uh, those first few birds, Canada geese, mallards, and northern pintails, uh, really pushing the, pushing the snow line as the, as the spring progresses. Uh, and as the season goes along, more of that snow starts to melt. You see uh, just uh, incredible diversity of species that come through this region. Uh, more species of waterfowl, you get your gadwalls and blue winged teal. Uh, you see the uh, uh, huge concentrations of, of snow geese uh, uh, that are in this area for, uh, for a long period of time. We just have the great uh, mix of, of, of habitat that, that helps uh, these birds as their, their incredible migration northward in the spring changes on the landscape that, that, that we're most concerned about, uh, of course, are our continued loss of grasslands and, and wetlands that, that, that these species need to, to survive, uh, really. Uh, the migration is uh, incredible distances for some of these birds, uh, uh, literally, you know, thousands of miles. Uh, we, we know a blue-winged teal that, that were banded here in this area that, that spend their winters as far down as, as northern South America and they have to come all the way back here uh, to put their nests in the spring. So they need habitat throughout that entire migration corridor in order to, to re refuel, if you will, to continue to fly those long distances. So really, uh, habitat is, is important uh, in the breeding areas, but also wintering areas and everywhere in between. So in this part of the world, uh, you know, the water cycle is really dynamic. Uh, some some uh, winters are, are wetter than others, some, some summers are wetter than others, and how we manage that water really depends on, on how we manage our, our entire landscape. Uh, grasslands that have been converted into, into crop row agriculture may not retain the, the water that they used to. Uh, wetlands that have been drained uh, facilitate the flow of water downhill. Uh, so as we continue to kind of change the landscape, uh, we're, we're expediting the flow of that water downhill. Uh, small wetlands become large wetlands, large wetlands become lakes, and we really kind of change the dynamic of the water cycle across South Dakota, which impacts uh, both the migration, impacts uh, agriculture, uh, impacts our infrastructure at the same time. We have roads that blow out routinely because the water uh, accumulates in our riparian areas much uh, faster and longer than it used to. A big part of what we do is find ways to, to work with farmers and ranchers to keep those habitats intact uh, on the upper reaches of the watershed. Uh, it helps uh, the landscape uh, manage the water when we get heavy rainfall events or, or heavy snow melt events. It also makes better habitat uh, for all sorts of species of, of wildlife and birds. In this part of, the, of, of Edmonds County, you know, much of our grasslands have been converted into row crop agriculture. Uh, but there are still fragments uh, remaining. Uh, this is a particular uh, project that Ducks Unlimited has been working on in Edmonds County. Uh, approximately 320 acres of, of really pristine uh, prairie habitat. Uh, lots of, of wetlands that uh, still in their, in their natural condition. Uh, we are restoring uh, approximately 30 acres of, of grassland uh, that was being used in row crop agriculture and we're going to protect uh, all of this, uh, this piece uh, to, to make sure that we have grasslands and, and wetlands intact uh, uh, forever in, in just this small part of, a part of the area. Now, I know around us we have a lot of uh, agriculture as well, but much of those, uh, those crop fields still have uh, intact wetland basins. Uh, even though 
uh, some of the grasslands have been lost, those wetlands still have value uh, for, for wildlife at the same time. As you drive around the landscape right now in the migration, uh, those wetlands and croplands are still very productive for, for wildlife, uh, provide uh, food sources in the migration, and even help uh, provide during, during the breeding cycle and the brood season uh, as well. So it's important, although they can be uh, difficult to manage in a cropland setting, we want to keep those, those wetlands uh, in cropland intact as well. These ecosystems were designed uh, and evolved uh, with the influence of, of bison herds across this landscape. Uh, if we want to conserve these habitats and, and improve soil health and, and have the biodiversity we, we want to achieve out here, we have to be using livestock in these systems and improving rotational grazing systems, uh, incorporating livestock in the, in the cropping systems. Uh, and really we found a, a great connection with, with farmers and ranchers uh, to integrate livestock and improve the, the, the conservation value of these resources. South Dakota is really uh, an amazing place um, and, and it has, uh, provides value for, for a lot of people and there's a lot of entities that are interested in, in protecting those resources. Ducks Unlimited is one of those, but we work with, uh, with uh, a whole host of other partners in order to get our, our projects uh, accomplished. Uh, the goals are huge, uh, nothing that, that Ducks Unlimited can do on our own. So we work uh, uh, with federal agency partners like the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service uh, Natural Resources Conservation Service. We work with our state partners uh, at the South Dakota Game Fish and Parks. Uh, we work with a lot of other different, uh, you know, uh, non-government agencies uh, like uh, the Nature Conservancy and Pheasants Forever and, and Audubon and all of these groups, uh, the Grassland, South Dakota Grassland Coalition, the South Dakota Soil Health Coalition. So if we want to have an impact across this landscape, we have to be working with farmers and ranchers uh, and finding ways that, that, that both of us can benefit. Uh, let's find ways to, to raise food, fiber, and fuel, uh, but keep our, our wetlands and grasslands intact at the same time. Uh, let's, let's, let's raise some wildlife and, and, ra and raise money at the same time. So a lot of what these partners do is work collaboratively to find ways uh, uh, to incentivize practices that are, that are good for natural resources uh, and good for the sustainability of, of those agricultural systems at the same time. So uh, really we've taken a, a strong effort to, to to meet them in a way that, that benefits both sides if we want to have a, a landscape scale effect uh, uh, on, this, on this region. All of these groups are interested in, in protecting our resources because we understand what we have is, is really remarkable and we have to do what we can to protect it and make sure that it stays intact for generations to come.